Hello and welcome. Today we're featuring Johannes Hoff Sellers 2011 Emmy Method Traditional Brut from Marlborough. That's quite a mouthful actually, but it is quite a mouthful as we'll discover shortly. The Johannes Hoff Winery is halfway between uh, Picton and Blenheim on a, on a long stretch of road. It's, it's really a lovely place. It's really worth visiting. It's got a, a steep terraced vines face along alongside the road and the most distinguishing feature is it's got a 50 meter tunnel that was tunneled in through solid rock it's a it's a cellar that the, where they store their the wines solid rock by west coast miners some some, some years ago now it's uh, i spent uh, an hour or so recently with owners uh, uh, Warwick Foley and Adel Everling. We had, we had a, a wonderful time. They opened, opened some lovely old bottles for me and it was a pleasure to, to see them, so thank you. Their underground wine cellar reminds me very much of, of uh, the, the underground cellars that many wineries have in Champagne and there's a very practical reason for it because if you go down a certain to a certain depth you get very constant temperatures and, and very cool temperatures. Absolutely perfect for the long-term cellaring of wine, which is what uh, uh, what Johannes offer up to and what they are up to in Champagne, of course. The Emmy, it's a Pinot dominant wine. I think about 75% of the wine is, is Pinot Noir. So it tends to be richer and, 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 uh, and fuller and, 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 and sometimes, I have to say sometimes, a little bit more complex than the uh, Chardonnay dominant sparkling wines. It's made from hand harvested grapes uh, being partly fermented in barrels to give an extra measure of texture and, and complexity. And the remarkable thing about this wine is it spent 11 years in the bottle on the on the yeast lees, on tirage as the French say, uh, before being uh, disgorged and topped up and and ready for market. So it's it's a it's a certainly a long a long term project. And the longer wine spends on the lees, uh, the more bready yeasty richness that uh, it gets. So I'm looking forward to experiencing that. Let's uh, let's taste the wine. Quite a quite a, a reasonably deep colour. And I'm getting I'm getting that really bready that classic sort of I call it baguette crust. Uh, a nose that's uh, a really a, just a, a a sign of of long contact with the yeast lees and the, which have autolyzed they break down and and give uh, uh, this distinctive character gosh there's plenty of bubbles coming through in the glass but it's not it's uh, it's it's rather m mellow on the on the palate very a, a big rich wine lots going on there's um, oh, I love it. It's a, a very, a very hearty, sparkling wine, uh, and there's a wonderful line of acidity uh, coming through that uh, stops it being at all cloying. It, it keeps it nice and refreshing. It's a, uh, it'd be a good food wine. This, I think, the classic uh, food match would be white bait and oysters separately. <laughs> but with both of them, with the white bait, you'd have to just Give it a good garnish with lemon or lime, and the same with the oysters too, and, and we get a lovely flavour combination. I scored this 93 out of 100, that's a, a pretty hefty score, which is, gives it a silver ribbon, and um, it has a drinking window of, well, jeepers, it's delicious now. It's hard to imagine it getting better. I personally like aged bubbly. I like that that really mellow, matterized is the technical term of sparkling wine. Even when they haven't they run out of bubbles, I think they can still be wonderfully interesting and 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 pleasurable wines to drink. So so you know another 10 years w would do it no great harm in my view. Uh, so yeah. Cheers.